Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your Dive Math 7.6 CDs. First, work the problems with me. Work every practice problem that I work and write down everything that I write down. Remember too that my practice problems, they aren't the same as the practice problems in that particular lesson that you're doing. They're similar, but they're not the same. So if you need some extra practice, do the ones in the book as well. Next, pause and rewind until you understand. This is one of the things that makes doing a lesson on a CD so much better than a live classroom is that you can rewind the teacher. You can just rewind and rewind until you understand a particular concept. So make sure and take advantage of that. Also, remember when you're working the practice problems, do a couple of them with me. Then if you think you understand how to do the next one, pause the CD, work it yourself, fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, go on to the next one. If you got it incorrect, rewind and see what you did wrong. You also need to make sure and do the facts practice, mental math, and problem solving section that's at the top of each lesson. Do one of those at least once per week. And those facts practice tests, you need to make at least a 90% or greater on those. Otherwise, you need to do them again. You should also time yourself on those facts practice tests and try to beat your previous time. Also remember to do all the problems in every problem set and also do all the tests that are in the test booklet and there are instructions in the test booklet as to when to take those tests. It's important to show your work as well. In Math 7-6 there's lots of mental math, meaning math that you do in your head, multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division. So do most of it in your head, but when you need to show your work, don't hesitate to show your work. Especially if you're getting a particular problem wrong repeatedly, that probably means you're not showing enough work. And finally, have a good attitude. The best math program in the world won't make a bit of difference if you don't have a good, hard-working attitude. Be thankful that you have a nice computer with speakers and a cool CD lesson to work on and to learn from. Not everybody has that advantage that you have. God has given you a great opportunity here to have an excellent education and part of it is up to you as to your attitude and what you make of this opportunity. So work hard, do your best to learn these lessons and I know that God will bless you for that. Lesson 10 has two parts. The first part is on sequences and the second part is on scales. Let's look at the first part on sequences and I have the definition of a sequence there, a list of numbers that follows a pattern or you could think of it as an ordered list of numbers that follows a certain rule as well. So this would be a sequence if you had 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and you can put dot 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 meaning that that sequence continues on and the pattern or rule that you see there is that you add 2 to each subsequent number there in that sequence. Now that would be called an addition sequence because the same number is added to each subsequent number 2. 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10. Now this would be a multiplication sequence if you had 2, 4, 8, 16, 32 and so on. Can you see the pattern there? This is a multiplication sequence that I'm doing here so think about that. Every one is multiplied by 2, right? 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, 16 times 2 is 32. So that would be a multiplication sequence. Now that first sequence that we did that also might be familiar to you as the set of even numbers. The sequence of odd numbers or set of odd numbers would be like this, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and so on. Notice in both cases, the even or the odd, there's a similar pattern there. Each subsequent number, is 2, is added to it. Why don't we do a couple of practice problems using sequences now. Now look at that sequence there and I have three blank spaces there. Tell me what the next three numbers would be in that sequence. You can pause the CD and try to figure it out first. That's what I, I want you to do there. Well you can tell 
that's similar to one of the examples we just did. That's a multiplication sequence. And so we're multiplying by 2 each time. So the next number would be 32. Then times 2 would be 64. Then that times 2 would be 128. Now look at this sequence. 1, 7, 13, 19. What are the next three numbers in that sequence? Well, just think about it for a while. Is that an addition or a multiplication sequence? And just think of some numbers. 1 multiplied by what equals 7? Well, 1 times 7 is 7. 7 times 7 would be 49, so that's not a multiplication sequence. So do addition. 1 plus 6 is 7. 7 plus 6 is 13. It's obviously an addition sequence. 13 plus 6 is 19. 19 plus 6 would be 25. 25 plus 6 would be 31. 31 plus 6 would be 37. And so those would be the next three numbers in that sequence, 25, 31, and 37. Let's do another practice problem with even and odd numbers this time. Look at what I have written there. Think of a whole number. Now, a whole number is like 1, 2, 3, and so on. So it's not a number with a decimal or anything like that. And it's not 0 either. Think of a whole number, double it, then triple it. Is the result even or odd? So once you go ahead and do that, see what you get. Well, I'm just going to do a couple of different numbers. I'm going to start with 1. I'll double that, so that would mean multiplying it by 2. And then I'll triple that. So that means taking 1 times 2 and tripling that, so that means multiplying that by 3. So we'd have 1 times 2 times 3 is 6. So that's even. Now let's start with an even number. That time we started with an odd number, 1. We doubled it, and then we tripled it. Let's start with an even number and see if we still get an even answer. Let's start with 4. Double it. So that would be 8. Triple that. 4 times 2 times 3. That would equal 24. So we still get an even number. So either way, the result will always be even for that word problem there. Well, now let's talk about scales. One way to think about a scale is a ruler. A ruler is basically a scale. It's basically an ordered arrangement of numbers. And on that scale, the values are represented by tick marks. And one of the important things when you're reading a scale is to figure out how far apart the tick marks are. For example, for this scale that I've drawn on the board, how far apart are those tick marks? What is the spacing on them? Well, you see that the big ones are 10, 20, 30, 40, and then the little ones in between those. So the spacing in between them is 5 apart. And so that's an important thing to understand when you're reading a new scale that you're not familiar with, is to figure out how far apart the tick marks are spaced. Now look at this ruler that I've drawn. Now how far apart are the tick marks? You see the big ones are 2, 4, 6, 8. So the big ones are 2 apart. So the tick marks on here then are 1 apart. That's the distance in between. That's a different scale than the other ruler that I have drawn on the board there. So that's very important to understand the scale of a particular ruler or a thermometer or a graph, whatever it may be that you're studying. Make sure you understand the scale. How far apart are the tick marks spaced before you start doing any work? Now, I'm not going to do an example problem on this or a practice problem. Make sure you do practice problem D in the textbook on page 45. That will help you understand scales a little bit better. Okay, well that's all for lesson 10.